Welcome to Electron Line. Our next problem, we're trying to find the temperature at the bottom of the pot. So we have a pot sitting on an electric stove. Heat is being transferred from the stove through this bottom portion of the pot, which is made out of steel, into the water inside the pot. And notice that 750 grams of water are evaporated every five minutes. We're given the heat conductivity of steel in terms of calories per second per centimeter per centigrade degree. Notice that the thickness of the bottom of the pot is one and a half centimeters. That's quite thick for a pot. And uh, notice that the latent heat of vaporization for water is 540 calories per gram. So we're trying to find the temperature at the bottom of the pot. So first what we need to do is try to find the heat flow into the water from the bottom of the pot. We just need to know how much heat is required to enter the water. All right, so that means we need the heat flow, Q. And of course, that would be equal to the amount of heat required to vaporize 750 grams of water. And so we have the latent heat of vaporization. So that means that the mass times the latent heat of vaporization divided by the time, right? Because it's the amount of heat required per unit time, Q, is dQ dt, and that's the amount of heat per unit time. So the mass is 750 grams. Oop, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So this is 750 grams multiplied times the latent heat of fusion, which is 540 calories per gram, all divided by the time, and the time is going to be five minutes. So five minutes is equal to 300 seconds. So notice that grams cancel out. This is going to be calories per second for the heat flow. So with a calculator, we can figure out what that is. So it's 750 times 540 divided by 300, and that requires 1,350 calories per second. There we go. All right. Now that we know the heat flow, now we can put that into the equation uh, that determines the heat flow through a substance, the heat conductivity through a substance. So I have Q dot is equal to the change in the temperature divided by, in this case, that will be, let's see here, that would be delta X divided by the heat conductivity times the cross-sectional area. Ah, one more thing is missing. We need to know the cross-sectional area at the bottom of the pot. And so let's say the area is equal to 1,500 square centimeters. All right. So without that, of course, we couldn't solve the problem. Now, what are we looking for is we're looking for delta T. That means that delta T is going to be equal to, uh, that would be Q dot times delta X divided by K times A. So there's our Q dot. All right. So now we need to plug in the numbers and see what we get. So that means that delta T is equal to Q dot, uh, that would be 1,350 calories per second. We multiply that times the thickness, which is 1.5 centimeters. And notice, since K is given to us in terms of calories per second per centimeters per centigrade degree, we can leave the thickness in centimeters. So K is going to be equal to 0 0.12 calories per second times centimeters times centigrade degree. And we multiply times the cross-section area. We said it was going to be 1,500 centimeters squared. And so the difference is going to be in terms of centigrade degrees. So now we need a calculator. So we got 1,350 times 1 1.5 divided by 0.12 and divided by 1,500 equals and I get 11.25. So delta T is equal to 11.25, that would be centigrade degrees. Now, the temperature at the bottom of the pot, T at the bottom, would be equal to the temperature on the inside of the pot plus delta T. The temperature inside is 100 degrees centigrade plus 11.25 centigrade degrees is equal to 111.25 degrees centigrade as the temperature at the bottom of the pot. Now, what have we ignored? Well, we ignored the heat flow from the bottom of the pot into the water, the boiling water. 
So that's kind of a convection current, we've ignored that, and we've also ignored the boundary between the stove and the bottom of the steel, which also throws an additional term in there that we normally need to deal with. So we've just ignored convection currents, just simply conduction alone, the temperature at the bottom would be 11.25 degrees more than it is inside the pot where the water is boiling at 100 degrees centigrade, and that is how it's done.